And hello, my friend, and welcome to Book Talks with Keith. I'm your host, Keith Brown, and I am so very glad that you are listening to this podcast. Thank you so much. Thank you for sharing it. Thank you for listening. Thank you for telling others about it. That's the way we share the love and share the news of this podcast. And today, as I have been doing each and every week, I am bringing to you another fantastic author for you to get to know and to get to know a little bit about uh, his work. And his name is John Salmon. And, and let me, before I even let him speak, let me just ask him, let me, let me tell you, I asked him how to pronounce his last name because it's spelled like the fish. And he says, up here, we say salmon. Uh, down where I am, it's salmon. But anyway, John Salmon, <laughs> welcome to the program. Thank you. Yeah, it's good to be here. Uh, I appreciate you coming on. Thank you. And let's begin by just letting the uh, listener or viewer know a little bit about who you are, you know, just whatever you wanted to know so that they can get to know who's behind the book. Uh, okay. Um, yeah, my name is John Salmon and I live in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Um, I grew up a uh, minister's son and we moved around a lot. So I lived, I was born actually in Savannah, Georgia. I lived there very briefly, only a couple years. And um, then I lived in Illinois and Wisconsin, Pennsylvania and Texas. And then I came back up to Pennsylvania, where I've lived since oh, around 1982. So I've been here a long time. Um, I'm married, and yeah, I'm, I I am a psychologist. So I went to college here, and then I got into community mental health. Um, worked for a time while I was going through college as a part-time youth minister, and then I worked for community mental health. And now I have a private practice. Um, my wife and I, I've been married for about 30, a little over 30 years. And my wife and I have a private practice together. Oh, nice. Great. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I guess that can be good. Uh, in some cases, it can be bad. I'm married to a psychologist. So, yeah, I, I you know, yep, yep. I, I sometimes <laughs> joke with her that I married her so she can fix me, but I don't know if that works. Really well. <laughs> yeah, we, we supervise one another. <laughs> I understand. Very good. Very good. So how does a psychologist, and I know that as a psychologist, you had to write books, uh, write uh, all types of, you know, things for your graduate studies and your, you know, formal papers and your notes for your clients and all this kind of stuff. But um, how did you get interested in writing a book? What, what inspired that? Yeah, you know, for as long as I can remember, I thought about writing books. I didn't really know what kinds of books even when i was young um, i'd make up stories and write down little stories and things like that i can remember one of my uh, friends in school would draw a picture when i was in middle school he'd draw a picture and i'd write a story about it you know and so i've always liked to write and when i went through school and we did all the writing i sort of quit writing for a while because I, I, maybe i was tired of it burned out or something I can relate, um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but it, it grew again. It began to grow again, and, and I felt um, compelled to write. One of the, the first book I wrote, the reason I did that is because as a therapist, as a psychologist working with people, I worked a lot with couples. And unfortunately, a lot of times by the time a couple came into therapy, they'd been struggling for years, and they um, were – at wit's end. So I was hoping that by writing a book, maybe um, people could get the book, we could do workshops and things like that to try and help people before it got to the point that they needed therapy. Understand. And so that's when I came back into writing more formally. Um, prior to that, I would write little things for my kids or, you know, for my wife and things like that. Gotcha. So what was the so was that first book that you were talking about, was it a published work or is it just something you wrote or did you actually get it published? Yeah, the first one I wrote, um, I did publish um, through Westbow. So it was sort of a, a self-publishing type help, okay. you know. Okay. So what was the title yeah. of that book? Um, that, that book is titled Family by God's Design. Okay. It, and so um, I obviously, as a son of a minister, um, you are, I assume, a, still a man of faith and you bring your yes. 
Christian faith into your writing. Is that the case? Yes. Yes. A lot of the things, most of the things I write are very much faith-based. I got you. All right. So in your, so what you did is you combined your faith with your work as a psychologist in this first book. And you said that was primarily geared toward couples trying to help them in their struggles. Is that what that's? Yeah, it was, when I started, it was going to be primarily geared towards couples, but then I applied it to the whole family so that I used some of the same principles that you use in developing that marital relationship um, in, in applying it to the whole family and how to help build your relationship with your children and be able to discipline effectively. And of course, all of that starts with having a good marriage. The better the marriage, the easier it is to parent. <laughs> Oh, absolutely, for sure. Um, and, and I'm glad to hear you say that you were trying to, to reach these people before they got to a certain point, because like you said, a lot of times when people do get to the point where they seek therapy or even counseling with their, with a pastor, you know, for instance, mm -hmm. a lot of times it's at a point there that the, the, the ability to restore sometime is quite limited because you, know, right. you said a lot of the damage has been done. So I'm, I can understand your willingness to be proactive in that. And what was the title right. again of that book? Um, that's called Family by God's Design. Okay. Family by God's Design. Okay. So listener, if you're out there and you are thinking, you know, I, I'm always wanting to learn more about having a great family, especially if you're a person of faith, then you would, uh, be well served to pick this up and give it a give it a read and, and see what insight that John can bring to you and your family because he's bringing obviously his background in faith as well as his formal education. So, all right, well that's good. So tell me about uh, what else. So after that, what what was the next thing that you had? Um, in writing. Yes. Or, um, I think I think the next one I wrote was a devotional for husbands. And um, I, well, about the time I wrote that book, I started a, a website called Family Family by God's Design, and it focuses on honor, grace, and celebration. And I was beginning to write blogs for that. So I wrote a couple blogs a week on there that deal with family, marriage. Um, and as I did that, after a while, I started gathering some of the blogs together and I gathered some together and wrote a couple extra for a devotional on husbands called For His Eyes Only. Hmm. And it focuses on, it's a 30-day devotional for husbands that serves also as a sort of prayer guide, how to see your wife, how to pray for your wife, um, beginning with being grateful for your wife. <laughs> understand. Now, John... Um... As someone who has, I'm just curious, um, I know you said you were a psychologist, and I know that you had to go through that training. Uh, did, did you also go through seminary or uh, Christian mm -hmm. college, or was, you know, I know sometimes, um, you know, counseling degrees, master's programs can be both Christian and psychological in nature, you know, get a Christian counseling mm -hmm. degree. Was that the, the, the way you went, or is this something that you've done basically on your own? in addition to your yeah. formal education? Well, when I first started college, um, I began in a, a Bible college, in a Christian college. In our, in our tradition, we go straight to Bible college for our undergraduate degree. And I got about 90 or 100 credits there, but decided I didn't, did not want to go into the full-time ministry, into a pulpit ministry or a, a church-employed ministry, mm -hmm. and wanted to work more in the community. Um, and I had a advisor there who introduced me to music therapy at that time. And so I got interested in music therapy and I transferred to um, a university here in Pittsburgh where I could work on a degree in music therapy. So I started off in a Bible college, but I never, never finished. I understand. All right. But the, but the passion of your faith was always there and remained, I assume, through this whole process. Yes. Yeah. I always, my faith was always a, a big part, has always been a big part of my life, very important part. Um, and something I'm always striving to grow in. And some of the, a lot of the things that 
even the writing that I have comes out of um, my searching to try and live out my faith in a practical way, both mm-hmm. largely within family. Um, so that that's been a big part of of who I am, and what what compels me, I think, to write and what guides my uh, ministry through counseling. Although I don't practice as a Christian counselor per se, we don't advertise that way, but um, faith does come into a lot of the work we do. I understand. I'm sure you would, I mean, just energetically for some people, or, you know, God, to, you know, for those of faith, God bringing people into your life, you're able to sit down and talk with people that, that are drawn to you. So I, so I get that, even if it's not in a formal display way. So, right, um, right. so, so how many books have you written altogether? I think six. Wow. Six all together. Okay. So um, we, we started out with the family book on helping them build strong families. Then we had right. the, the devotion for men or his eyes. on right. You said, uh, right. what, else have, what else have you written? Um, Following that, I did a uh, uh, a devotional on based on the Gospel of Mark during that incorporated just the last day of Christ, and um, I wasn't going to publish that, but I gave it to our congregation, the church I go to, as for a, a Lent devotion, devotion for Lent, and people really seemed to enjoy it, so I decided to publish that. Um, it's purely a Christian devotional focused on the life of the last 24 hours, basically the last day of Christ um, from the book of Mark, uh, hopefully helping and, people. And that's kind of an interesting choice of the gospels too, because um, right. it's, it's probably the, it, well, and most scholars would say it's the first gospel that was ever written. Um, right. But it's often the least read gospel of the ones mm-hmm. that we have. So it's an interesting choice. I, I find that interesting. If I may, John, let me, you know, for those that are Christian and, and you know, this, this is appealing to them, um, do you mind sharing what your affiliation is with the church mm-hmm. and, and your faith so that they can know from what perspective, you know, this is coming from? Sure. Um, I'm a member of the Christian Church, Church of Christ, okay. which is a non-denominational type church. Okay. Yeah. All right. So we, we, we're we now, we've done a devotion on the last days of Christ um, as a Lenten devotion. And for the, anybody that's not of Christian faith or a person who is just listening for curiosity's sake, this is basically the the, the Easter season that he's talking about, the, the preparation right. of the celebration of Easter. Okay, so right. what was after that? Um, I wrote a, a parenting book called A Practical... A, oh man, I can't remember the name now. <laughs> it's that's, a that's practical right. a practical guide for better be, for better behaved children. Um, uh. And it, it's a parenting book. And it's has very short chapters that talk about various aspects of parenting. Once again, they sort of group together in topics like how to strengthen your marriage, um, how to encourage positive behavior and things like that. But they're short chapters and then some questions afterwards to help apply it. Well, and uh, I, I can hear a lot of parents going, yeah, I need that. I need that. Especially, <laughs> especially in our world today. I think sometimes we need to, you know, we, we, Things that worked when I was a young man, John, they don't always work now. And and truthfully, right. a lot of the things that happened when I was a young fella can't be done now. Right, right. Yeah, and this one is, it's a practical guide to better behave children. And it came about because there had been so much research that talked about the detriments of too much physical discipline, you know? Um, and so... But nobody ever says, what can I do then? If I can't physically discipline, what can I do? And so this is a lot of ideas of how you can interact with your child to build positive behaviors and build positive relationships um, without any of the physical discipline. Right. 
And it, this yeah. sounds like, I mean, obviously I, we've already stated that you're coming from a Christian perspective, but this sounds like something that would be useful for anybody, regardless of their faith uh, in this situation, trying to, because it sounds like this is a very practical book, right? Right, right. It's very practical and it really is not, it's probably the least uh, faith-based book that I have. The, uh, it's still faith-based, but it's not explicitly faith-based, right? Probably Lisa. And what I do find that people often say, and I, I think it fits with who I am, is most of the books I have are pretty practical. They, even the devotional for men ends with some practical ideas of what to do, you know, how to implement it. Um, the family by God's design is very practical based on concrete things you can do on a daily basis that honors the family that shows grace and celebrates. Well, I can certainly, I can certainly believe that and understand it because, you know, in your line of work, you have to be practical. I mean, if, if you're not right. practically helping people in their lives, then you're a waste of time and a waste of money. Right. So they, they come to you for practical help. So I can right. see how that would come across in your writing. So I get that. All right. So let's, you said six. So I'm going to go back and just for my benefit, yeah. you had family by design. You had a men's devotion for his eyes only. You had, um, a devotion on the gospel of Mark. Right. You had a book on discipline for children, how to better. Right. Discipline. All right. So that's four. four. All right. All right. So um, the next one would be. The next one is a 30 day devotion called the sacred pause. And it's based on patience. Oh. Um, and that one. Is that a four letter word? Susan? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah. That's a hard, that's what it, you know, you read first Corinthians 13, right? Love is patient. Love is kind. And I, I had trouble getting past love is patient. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah, I know. It's a struggle. And, uh, yeah, but that's, yeah, that's the idea of 30 days of thinking about patience and reflecting on patience and some practical ideas of building patience and how it can enhance your marriage, you know, better your marriage and your family through the growth of patience and the practice of patience. And it does take practice. <laughs> it absolutely does. And there's one, yeah. thing, I think, I think there's one thing that we have that is one of the things that's missing a lot of times in our society as a whole these days is, is patience. And there is this idea that permeates our society that, you know, I want what I want and I want it now. And, you know, right, right. That's not just our young kids that are feeling that way. Many older adults are that way now as well. And and I'm holding yeah. up a cell, those that are listening, today, I'm <laughs> holding up a cell phone in my hand because that has given us a sense of this instant gratification and instant right. knowledge and instant information. So there's there's that, I think impatience is, is something we all probably need to really think about. So I could see the validity right. of that book for sure. All right. So that's a good yep. one. All right. What else you got, John? And the last book that we have published at this point is a, a, actually a children's picture book. Um, a oh. story that I used to tell my kids when they were little, and it's called Max Loses His Legs. Um, but it's about Max the Caterpillar who loses his legs and becomes a cat uh, butterfly. And my, my wife illustrated it after many years. I finally convinced her to illustrate it for us. <laughs> and then so we published it together. Nice, nice. And how, how long ago was this book? Uh, it was fairly recently. Um, maybe, maybe a year and a half ago. It was our uh, COVID project. My, uh, my wife's COVID project to do the, the art for it. Okay. And what was the name of that one again? Max loses his legs. Okay. Now, and yeah. that's for uh, children of what ages did you have in mind for this? It's a children's book and one that probably like three and four, four and five, four and five. Um, it's a, it would be a nice book for a parent to read to a child. Okay. It's got Max, Max looking for advice and getting some good advice from the praying mantis and and wrapping himself up and finding a new life and a new perspective. <laughs> nice, nice. All right, well, so there you go, folks. Uh, uh, so you've got 
six books out. Um, is there another one in the works? Yeah, we have one that's in the process of finalized for uh, publishing another children's book. And it's called um, The Good Snake. It's a retelling of The Good Samaritan. But instead of people, uh, there's the rabbit who gets who gets waylaid on his trip. And there's a, a dog and a mouse and a snake who pass by. But the snake is the one who is the good snake. <laughs> it's an, and that's an interesting, um, interesting idea, because based on your your biblical knowledge, the snake often has certainly a negative uh, connotation in the Bible. Um, right. Often referred to and uh, illustrative of the devil or you know, right, so right. It's interesting that you would choose a snake to be the the good Samaritan. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's an interesting interesting idea. Um, so that one you said is is about to be published. Yes, it's uh, with the publisher now, and okay. uh, I should be getting a sample copy soon to nice. get the final edits in, and then we'll be able to finish that up. What's the dream for next for you? And the next one I'm finishing up right now is uh, a 30 day devotional on kindness, right? Love is patient. Love is kind. Ah. And uh, kind is the next one. Okay. And uh, yeah. And hopefully, you know, over time, over the next many, many years, I guess I'd like to do take each of the characteristics in first Corinthians 13 and do a 30 day devotional. Mm -hmm. And uh, I could see how that would make a good, good um series good yeah nice. devotions. yeah very good very good Thanks. so um is if if you had to really just say i i you know the book i'd really like for you guys to i i see the children's book and i know that there are parents out there who could probably enjoy reading something especially if you're a, you're a parent and you're a person of faith you know, John's already told you that that his writing is based on his own personal faith. And so if you are a Christian family and you are looking for something for your young child, then this would be certainly an option. So we'll make sure that link is in the show notes, John, so they can. Find okay, it. thank you. And um, is there of all the other books, is there one that you really just would say, you know, what, it, it, for you adults that are looking for something for you? This is the one of my books I'd really want you to start with. Do you have an opinion on that? Mm -hmm. Or they, I know they're all good. I, we we yeah. think all our books are good, but is there one you would encourage them to start with? I think uh, Family by God's Design is the biggest book. It's still not huge, but it's the bigger. It's, you know, the others are limited to 30 days and devotional and, and personal growth. But the Family by God's Design gives an overview of of what I think are the best ways for family to function and the way God, the way I believe God designed for our families to function. Um, and although I do make, it is very faith-based and I will talk about from a faith perspective, why this is important for us, but I gave it to a couple of my non-Christian friends too. And they said it, it didn't overwhelm them and they still found it very practical and very useful ideas. Um, so either way, it can work out well. Uh, but I think that would be, that's a good one to get because it it's all encompassing. It's more encompassing. I can understand that. That would be appropriate for those that are of faith. And like you said, people that are or aren't, they would be able to gain, glean some good information and practical suggestions. And I assume right. probably the same would be true for the discipline of children. I would uh, right. say the same would be the case there for those of you who are parents, young parents, especially, and you, you want to, to get some help in that arena. So that's what yeah. In fact, the, uh, the parenting book, if you read it, you probably would not even recognize that it was written by someone of faith. It just had less practical. I just has practical ideas. Gotcha. Gotcha. Right. That's good. Well, we will be sure, listener, to make sure that all the links are in the show notes so that you read it. You'll be able to find out a little bit about John in there. You'll be able to get all his links and, and any social things he wants to share on the show notes. I'll be glad to put those in there, too, so that you can connect with him. Um, John, 
it's been a pleasure to talk to you, my friend, uh, to, get, to get to know you. Thank you. Um, is yeah, there, I appreciate it. Yeah. Is there anything else that you would like to, to share with the listener that, you know, about you or about your writing or about your, your ambition or, or what, you know, anything? Mm -hmm. Is there anything you'd like right. to share with them? I think for me, one of the things that drew me back into writing was a deep desire to see the family flourish, to see the family grow strong. Um, I think there's so many things in our society today that tend to pull the family apart, whether it be, like you say, the cell phones that sort of divert us into our individual focus or just all the stress in the society around us and the call for achievement. Um, but that, that family becomes such a nucleus, a stronghold that our children can go forth from and do a great things. Um, they need the family to, to give them that security and the strength as they move out into the world. And as a couple, uh, both husband and wife, we do so much better when we know there's someone there who loves us and is supporting us. Um, so that is a large part of what drove me to do these types of books and, uh, that's, that's even the children's books are so parents can read to their children and draw closer to them. I think if, if you're lit, you know, if you've been listening to this, you, you probably have been able to discern quite easily that John's passion and is for the family. And it comes over in your in your talking. It comes over in the books you've written and and the things that you want to accomplish, John. So I appreciate that so much. And um, yeah. dear friends, if you're looking for something to inspire you, you know, some you want to try something. You want to, you know, this is a man. How long did you say you and your wife had been married, John? I, I forgot. Uh, we've been married thirty two years this year. In November, it'll be thirty two years. There you go. There's somebody that's been around the block a time or two in the marriage yeah. thing. So that's always helpful yeah. to, to know because, you know, as someone, I, I have to admit my first marriage did end, but it lasted 25 years. So I know in 25 wow. years that I made it, there were plenty of ups and plenty of downs, but, you know, right, just, right. You know, going through it. So, John, thank you so much for coming on Book Talks with Keith. I appreciate it. It was a pleasure getting to know you and um, hearing your heart that that's what I took most from this. You know, I want people to look at your books and hopefully buy your books, but I think the heart that you have for people and seeing them build strong families came across in this talk. And I appreciate that so much. Thank you very much. I really appreciate the opportunity. You are quite welcome, sir. Hang on for just a moment. I'm going to say bye to our listener and then I'll be with you. Okay. Hang on. Okay. Listener, thank you. Lister, thank you so much for joining me on this journey today in this episode with John Selman on Book Talks with Keith. I really do appreciate you tuning in. And, uh, you know, we can't do this without you. We can't get this podcast out to people. We can't help these authors become known to people, uh, to grow their audience, to sell their books so that they can impact more people with their art, with their work, with their passion, with their mission. And we need you to help us do that. So do spread the news of this podcast. I really appreciate it. And until next time, keep that reading going and fall in love with the very next book. Bye-bye, my friend.